Hi guys, this is Chris, your friend and buddy behind your channel, the 1235 German modeler. Finally, a new video with some real content. This video is about building a mid production Tiger One tank from the Schwere Panzerabteilung 505 of the 5th Tank Division. I call this Tiger. Badass Tiger and there's a good reason for that and this is why I got a little story to tell you this Tiger I have in my possession for about 30 years and it was in my shelf and I wanted to completely overhaul it and remodel it like sort of pimp my ride and for that reason I have done everything that I could to make it look new so when I get into the details of this video to show you exactly what I did to make it new, you will see what I did, what items I bought, what I added onto the Tiger. But now in hindsight, I can tell you that this seven months project was not really a good idea. But I met the challenge and I succeeded in the end. And I hope you like what I did. But I can honestly tell you that I would not do it again. It was just simply too much work. Now I'm gonna show you some pictures, some authentic photographs that inspired me uh, on how I wanted to build that tank, uh, what camouflage I used. Uh, those pictures are all authentic uh, from the Schwere Panzerabteilung 505 of the 5th Tank Division. And as you know, this Tiger will be part of my diorama uh, which is uh, representing the Operation Kutuzov, which again is part of the gigantic tank battle of Kursk between July and August 1943. Okay, that's enough now. Let's get started with the build. Okay, now here you can see the hull of the Tiger One. I basically had to scrap off all the tools because it was imprinted onto the plastic. It was, like I said, a really old kit. So I had to buy something new from the Royal Model, Tiger One tool and holder set. That really helped me to replace everything. Then I took a pedicure tool and I scraped into the hull the weld seams. It was basically the first time for me to try anything like that and uh, later on as you will see i put the flame cut marks in and the weld texture but for now i've just carved it out of the turret and the hull on the side so you can see all the work i did to make it look good and authentic later on and i've used tamiya putti to basically eliminate all the imperfections of the hull and the turrets i used to pretty much everywhere then I also bought from Aber um, the German 88 uh, barrel uh, in steel. I thought that was a really nice addition. And I put a machine gun into the hull because the old one uh, got destroyed. Okay, then after I did all the grooves with the pedicure tool for all the welding seams, it was time to do some armatecture. For this, I used again the Tamiya Putti and I mixed it up or I thinned it with a little bit of lacquer thinner. And as you can see, I put it around the hull and the turret. Of course I took sanding paper and sanded everything down so that it looked really authentic and smooth. After that I put in the steel barrel and I constructed some tools to do all the welding beads. And to make sure that the flame cut marks look nice I constructed those weld beads carving tools. I took a toothpick then some copper metal that I bent into the right shape so it had a sort of a C shape so that I could do the flame cut marks as they look like in reality. Then I got some arrow dyed epoxy resin and I used the tools that I just described to put it into the weld seams. And with this I created the flame cut marks. Oh, 
Okay, and now to a new tiny chapter. I added some shell impacts. For this, I used again the pedicure tool and some uh, Tamiya putty that I put into the holes that I drilled so it looks like the steel uh, melted and bent out a little. I also added some on the side, as you can see. And of course, also on the turret, I added some shell impacts. And by the way, um, to make it look really authentic, I have measured it out. And what it um, shows is 37 or 45 or even 57 millimeter Russian anti-tank guns. Okay, then let's get to the next chapter. I bought some Photoshop metal parts from Voyager model and Edward. But I have to tell you that I fell in love with Voyager model uh, photo edge parts simply because they are much, much better and look much more realistic than Edward. I think they have put much more work into um, their photo edge metal parts than Edward. And sometimes on the kit I had to use some plastic sheet to add some parts that were simply not there on the original kit. And a little nice fun part, a little detail was the tow hook that I made from a piece of metal wire. And then what was a really good investment was from Monster 3D, the tool and clamp set. I bought those and I used them pretty much everywhere throughout the tank. And a little fun project was building the lifting jack. I built it out of plastic sheet and photo edge metal parts, but I built it totally from scratch as you can see. And then a few more examples how the clamps were used. Again, a little tiny project was to put up that bar in front of the tank where they stored the tracks. I also did that from scratch out of photo edge metal parts. And then I bought from Rye Field model workable tracks. I put them together. I think it's a Taiwanese company. They are made of plastic, but I can tell you they are really not recommendable because they break uh, when you move them and so it's not a good idea I don't recommend that again and just buy the free old tracks the metal tracks the heavy-duty tracks that's really worth it and that's worth your money okay and finally we get to the painting part I use green stuff world as the surface primer that's a product I'm really happy with and I used it on all the parts and I continue to use it on all my models whenever I do priming I applied it with my Infinity High Quality Airbrush from Harder and Steamback. It's, in my opinion, one of the best airbrushes that are out there.
All right, then I used German Grey XF63 and I think I put three coats on the model with that color. Okay, and then before I painted it uh, with dark yellow XF60 from Tamiya, I put hairspray over the German gray. Um, I think I also applied two coats of hairspray before I painted it with dark yellow. Then here I cut out some circles in the size of the wheels and then I put them onto the wheels so I could protect the dark yellow before I painted it with rubber black and flat black as a mix so that I wouldn't have to paint the rubber that's outside of the steel wheels. I thought that was a very efficient technique. Okay, now came the part where I took uh, some different brushes and some tap water and I just uh, chipped down the paint to the German gray so that the whole tank looks really worn. After that process I used XF86 flat clear and I pretty much painted everything, the hull and the turret uh, to protect uh, the chipping I just did. And after I applied the flat clear I used again two coats of hairspray and once that was dry I used XF89 dark green 2 to add another camouflage. And then I repeated the process again with some brushes, different types of brushes, some rougher, some softer, and I did the chipping once again. And then it was time to put the decals on. I bought them from Petting House. I really love that brand. They pretty much have everything. And as you can see on the yellow X, that is the fifth uh, Panzer division. And then the knight on the right side is uh, the marking for the Schwere Panzer Abteilung 505. So the identification markings for this tank that I have chosen is 231. And that is the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Company, 1st Platoon. Or in German, 2. Bataillon, 3. Company, 1. Zug. And then not to forget, another important thing to mention for the decals is that I'm always using Microset, the setting solution for decals, and that's very recommendable. So make sure you always use that also. And then another tiny project, one that I really enjoyed was to make some blankets or some drapes. For that I've used glue for wood and water. I mixed that up. Then I took a paper tissue, I cut that into a square, I dumped it into the solution 
and then I draped it over square parts. I also had a spare tiger turret. I put it there just to see how it looks like and then I made some wrinkles into it and ultimately I think it turned out really nice. Okay, and then it was time to take care of the tracks. For that I used from Mick the track wash. I thinned that up quite a lot with the enamel thinner. And then I painted the teeth of the wheels. And for that I used chrome silver X11 and metallic gray XF56. And then it was time to weather the tracks even further. Uh, the color mix that I used, I used exactly the same also for the wires that I used later on on the tank. And the mix that I've used is 40% XF69 NATO Black, 55% XF68 NATO Brown and 5% XF7 Flat Red. And after that it was really important to add on some pigments. For that I used Vallejo pigments, the Burnt Sienna and the Light Sienna and I fixed them with the pigment fixer from AK Interactive. And after I did that, I put on again more track wash and again more pigments. And the tracks turned out really nice. Actually, I'm very happy with the result as you can see here. And then it was time to prepare the tracks for the turret. And for that purpose, I invested a bit more time. So I used the uh, wash uh, winter vehicles and I also used the track wash again and I also used for the in-between metal parts in the tracks that stick out the dark steel from Vallejo pigments and once again I think I'm very happy with the result And that brings me to my favorite part and that is to put a lot of rust all over the tank because it's a badass tiger and for that I have used the pigment fixer once again from AK Interactive the Vallejo pigments and I've used from make different washes um, for rust effects like streaking rust and light rust and they work together really well And then, especially on the exhaust to blend out the rust effects, I've used again from Vallejo Pigments, the natural iron oxide. I've also used that for the uh, cannon, um, for the muscle brake, and I think it always looks very authentic using those pigments for those type of purposes. Okay, and then on to the next project. As you can see in those authentic photographs, the German tank crews used barbed wire uh, to put around their tanks uh, to protect them uh, against foot soldiers and close combat to make sure they wouldn't be able to climb on top of their tanks with grenades or Molotov cocktails. Okay, so I bought the barbed wire from Royal Model. It uh, fit the purpose perfectly and it did the trick. Basically, I took a pencil and uh, put it around or raped it around the pencil and it ultimately had exactly the form that I needed uh, to simulate uh, what the German tank crews did in the Battle of Kursk. The next segment is going to show you what colors I've used to paint the drape. I've used Field Gray XF65 and IJN Gray XF77 and then I just washed it down with black wash from MIG. And again, I think it turned out really nice. And then I took some Vallejo washes on the wheels and I just uh, tried to make them look uh, worn out. And the next thing I also really enjoyed doing, I used AK Interactive uh, colors for fuel stains and engine oil and I put that on the tank uh, to give it that realistic effect that they had spilled some engine oil or some diesel fuel onto the covers of the engine. And now I'm gonna show you my favorite mix of colors that I always use whenever I have to paint 
wood or, or, or the wooden grips of tools. And for that I use Wooden Deck XF78 from Tamiya and I finish it off with AK Interactive wash colors for wood. Another thing what I like using a lot because it really makes some nice effects and those are the Rainmark effects from MIG as you can see here and I encourage you to use them. You can use them pretty much all around the tank. And then it was time to paint the impact from the Russian shells and for that I used the MIG washes, black wash and streaking rust effect and then also the chrome silver X11 for the outer rim of the shell impact. And then almost last but not least, I did more washes around the tank again from MIG, the German dark yellow and the black wash, just weathered it a little more. And then in that very last segment, I quickly want to show you how I painted the machine gun on the turret. For that I've used as a base color the IJN Grave XF77 from Tamiya. And then I washed it down with the black wash from MIG. And then for the machine gun grip, I've used once again the AK Interactive wood colors. Okay, my friends, so that brings it to the final reveal of the badass Tiger One. I want to thank you very much for watching guys thank you for having been with me please subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell <laughs> <laughs>